During the vast bombing campaigns of World War II, the Allies suffered losses to numerous aircraft on a daily basis. The importance of the aerial campaign and its potential to win the war was not taken lightly by those in charge. A way to ensure more aircraft would return to Britain following their missions was required. In this video, we look at the survivorship bias theory and its impact on aircraft during World War II. Abraham Wald was born in Hungary in 1902. It became apparent very early that he was an exceptionally intelligent young man. He would eventually graduate from the University of Vienna in 1931 with a PhD in mathematics. He initially struggled to find work given he was a foreigner in Austria, as well as being from a Jewish family. He was offered a job in the United States and was initially reluctant. However, once Austria was annexed by Germany, he quickly accepted. In the United States, he would eventually find himself working for the Statistical Research Group at Columbia University. This group would be used by the US to solve many military problems throughout the war. As the US entered World War II and began sending their aircraft to Britain to fight against the Germans, the aircraft losses began to increase. Military officials needed to find a way to increase their aircraft survival rate. A very obvious way to do this would be to fit more armour protection to their bombers. But given the importance of weight in aviation, Putting more armour in unnecessary areas could cause issues to the aircraft. Therefore, the assistance of the Statistical Research Group was sought. The group were tasked with reviewing the damage from enemy fire on Allied aircraft returning to Britain from their bombing missions. They would then have to make recommendations to the best way to increase their chances of survival. This is when the survivorship bias theory came into play. Once bombers returned, they would often have numerous bullet holes. But these bullet holes were not evenly spread across the aircraft. Most of the holes were concentrated around the wings and fuselage, with almost twice as much damage in those areas as the damage around the engines and the cockpit. So why was this the case? Well, maybe German fighter pilots were trained to target those areas. In any event, it doesn't matter, because surely the extra armour could go in the areas with the most damage, right? Well, no, because all is not what it seems. Wald was able to realise what was happening. Less damage was being found around the engines and the cockpits on these aircraft, because those were the aircraft that returned after the mission. The ones that had sustained damage in those areas didn't come back. Wald believed the damage was actually being distributed across the bombers evenly. However, the ones hit in the most vulnerable spots didn't return, and therefore the statistics incorrectly suggested those areas weren't being hit at all. Because the bombers being examined were the survivors, and the bombers being shot down weren't able to be examined, this created the survivorship bias theory. In the end, the huge amount of damage on the wings and fuselage of the returning aircraft meant those areas didn't need extra armour, as they were able to sustain damage and still make it back. So Wald and the research group were able to conclude that the reinforced armour needed to be placed in the vulnerable areas, such as the engines and the cockpit. The US Air Force and indeed the RAF were able to take these findings on board when building their aircraft, and it's believed that Wald's findings likely saved countless lives and aircraft during World War II. Tell us what you thought of Wald's findings in the comments section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.